Welcome, my name is Matt, or the Beast 34 and today I will be showing you how to make a clean, modern, minimalist style banner using Affinity Designer. You can also follow along with Affinity Photo if you would like. So to start off, you want to create a new document with the dimensions in pixels, and the dimensions are going to be 2560 by 1440, which is what you have to make it for a YouTube banner. Now hit create. And you'll get this um, screen here but now you want to import a banner template which I will leave in the description down below so to import the template download it from Google or the description what I did is I just searched on Google for YouTube banner template then I right clicked save image as and then to open that you want to go to affinity designer do control O, find the location of the file, double click it to open. Now with Affinity Designer, uncheck the lock button so that we can copy this. Hit control C, X, no, and control V to paste it. We need to set up the mobile boundaries basically. So in order to do that, hit control R to make the ruler icon up here. Drag the ruler out to this section here. And that is the mobile, what mobile users can see. So you want to make sure you fit all your text, important text within this area. And desktop users will be able to go to the complete edge of this. So now you want to delete the inner portion. You can do that by using the wand tool if you would like. So go to the pixel persona. Now grab the wand tool. And to increase the width of it, you can hit the bracket icon, the right bracket icon. Snap to edges, select the layer and just drag until you highlight it like so. Another way to do this would have just been going to the rectangular marquee tool and doing that, but I wanted to get it exactly. So now once you have that selected somehow, hit delete and control D to deselect. So now this is where we'll be making our banner, mainly in the center between these two blue rulers. So now we want to create the background. The background I created was something like this, so I'll leave the link for the image of the background in the description down below. And originally I made it like this, with 100% opacity, then I turned it down to 25. And make sure to drag that uh, background below this layer, below the template, so that way it doesn't overlap. If you want to create your own background like this, I can show you how to do that now. So first off, if you want to create a triangle background yourself, you want to go to view, then you want to go to snapping manager, and you want to enable snap to grid, snap to gaps and sizes, and you can do snap to object ge geometry, and then you can change this tolerance if you want. So once you have that closed, you can activate the grid with view, show grid. So now that you have the grid, you can start making the triangles in the designer persona. Go to the pen tool with P, or by clicking it, and make sure you have these settings, no stroke. You can change the color, I mean the fill later. So now you can zoom in with control mouse wheel forward or control mouse wheel backward to zoom out. So now just click and you would just click up here. Try not to leave any gaps. Then you would change the fill to this gray area. So any of a gray is what I did. So you do the first one then you can deselect with a V to go to the the uh, mouse tool as you can see that is a stroke so to click that layer and turn it down to zero and again it's not perfect so you can just move it up and then move the triangle behind the template like so so now you can add more if you would like just like that and hold control on a point if you want to move that there's a lot of tutorials in the pen tool similar commands to Photoshop if you know that so just you would just go along and change it change each triangle slightly different color hold shift to create a straight line just keep on clicking something like that the snapping enables you to keep all the shapes close so it would you would work with something like that but I'm just gonna leave a link to the one I created in the description below it takes a little while to do this but it's possible to do it by yourself so once you have the background you will want to move on to the text. 
the font I will be using in this tutorial and to get rid of that grid by the way just if you show grid again so the font I will be using in this tutorial is called go bold bold go bold then there's a bunch of fonts in the font pack so to download the font go to the link in the description below to font.com it's a reliable website for fonts download it um, extract the files then double click the text layer and then just uh, install on your computer there's a lot of tutorials out there for downloading fonts as well it should automatically update in your program once you download it if it doesn't you can just exit out of the program save your changes go back in then you should see the font so once you have the font installed hit T to bring up the text tool if you get this tool that means you hit T twice so just hit T again to go to this tool the artistic text tool not the frame text so now we can select the font by going up to the top left looking for go bold bold I download Go Bold Bold and Go Bold Thin. It's the two fonts that I want to download. Or you can download as much as you want. There's a ton in the pack. So select Go Bold Bold, type your name in all caps. You can enlarge it in the bottom right to about something like that. You can adjust it later. Then go to the top right here and you can change it to a uh, dark gray. That's what I'm gonna change it to. So now we want to Hit the text tool again, hit T. If you're not seeing your text show up, that means the text is not a, is not above the background, so make sure you have your layers organized. I'll rename them so it's clear. So again, bring up the text tool with T, add the text, and I'm gonna change this now to go bold thin, which was one in the pack. And now add like some sort of channel uh, motto or something. So once you've added a channel, motto you can make that similar size to your name similar length so it looks something like this I'm gonna keep it like this and center it by going along the red line like so now we need to import your logo so just to grab it wherever you have it saved same thing open it up unlock the layer control C and control V so once you have the logo in you'll want to center it if you can't find the lines to center it you can click the banner template layer then click the logo by holding control and clicking the logo like so to the alignment section here hit align horizontally and align vertically so now to add the media logos you'll want to uh, find them online or something or I may leave them in the description below as well but when you import your logos you're then want to make sure they're PNGs so the bird should not be colored in white should be transparent as you can see it's transparent same thing with the Instagram logo there shouldn't be any white filling it should be transparent for the next step to work so to change the color of all the logos you'll want to click one of them on the bottom or the top hold shift go up like so control G to group them whatever the media logos you have you can group all of them you can rename this by double clicking naming them media logos so now to change the color of them to match the background, go to adjustments, recolor, and drag this to lightness of black. Now to match it even better, you can go to opacity and change the opacity down to like 75 or 70 I'll go with. So if you want to select a logo, first off, I would recommend locking this background layer by clicking the layer locking it so you don't keep on accidentally clicking it so if you want to click the media logo you'll notice that you click the group when you click it so you want to hold control and click to get a single logo in a group if you want to reorganize them or you can go to the group and just click each individually and move them like so so now you will want to add the media logo text I'm gonna go with Google thin so add your text in all caps so then you can just resize it like so and just resize it approximately the center something like that it's up to you so then control c control v to paste it line it up with the other text type in your next handle same thing for the next logo control c control v drag down if you can't drag it down locate it in the layer panel on the right side so now click that 
and change it. So control zero is a helpful command to go back. So now you will want to center some stuff. So I click this, click to this layer, hold it shift and click this. Center it with the logo because that's centered on the screen already. So I'm actually gonna move these logos here to the left a little bit more. So in order to do that, I'm gonna actually group these logos to make it more organized. So click one and hold control to click the other ones. Control G and then name that media names and then drag that next to media logos. Whoops, I'm gonna move the banner template up to the top again so nothing is overlapping. Now with the media names and the media logos selected, I'm gonna move that in a little bit more towards the center. And if you wanna change this layer here, both of these, select them. And as you can see, it's not keeping the proportions. So if you wanna keep the proportions of the text, hold shift and downscale it like so. So now you will want to download a paint uh, or a watercolor paint pack thing I left in the description. So to download the uh, paint pack I left in the description, go to the link, hit free download, wait for this timer to finish. If an ad shows up, don't click on that and it'll download as a zip file. Once you get the zip file, you wanna click this shown folder, find the file, extract files with WinRAR or whatever program you would like, hit okay, and it'll put it in a folder. Then you click the folder and you find this file. This is the file that you're gonna to wanna to import, or if you're on Mac, you can grab that file. This is for Windows. So grab this to a place where you can find it. Go to this brushes tab here. Go to the three lines, hit import brushes, find the file I was talking about earlier, and double click that to import the brush. So once you have it imported, it's actually only gonna be in the pixel persona. Grab the brush by going to the brush tab and locating it. So paint splash brushes one. I actually downloaded it twice, which is why it says paint splash brushes one, two. And the first brush we're gonna be using is number seven. So in order to find the number of the brush, you can just hover over. So number seven is the first one I'm gonna be using. To downsize it, use the bracket keys and you can make it smaller or you can go to the top left and change it manually. You're then gonna wanna make a pixel layer. So click some layer in your thing and add pixel layer. Make sure that is below your logo layer and actually actually below all the text layers and the media logos. So it's only above the background. So now you're gonna wanna make it some sort of vibrant color, whatever is like your channel theme color, something like that. You can adjust it later. Now you can just put it like that. So if you want, you can mess around by adding different color brushes on top of this. So I'm gonna grab number nine, change the color slightly darker, and add it on top, like so, just to give it some depth, I guess. So now to go back to the move tool, hit B, or go to the top left and click it. Click out of all the layers by just clicking on the canvas, and now you can adjust the opacity, which is what I'm gonna do. Click the opacity again, and I'm gonna change that down to 75. Okay, so once you have that, you can continue to adjust this by clicking the paint layer and keeping it to scale by just dragging down. And another tip is if you're having all these like excess stuff out here, you can actually erase that by clicking the layer, going to the eraser with E, selecting an eraser brush, basic brush, and dragging it over here. So now you can erase anything that is way out, way out of the main focus. And that's going over your lettering if you would like. So control zero to go back in. And that looks good to me. So once you have this section here, or then I wanna add a little bit more color. So go back to your paintbrush, paint splash brushes one, and you can look for which brush you would like. I'm gonna be using brush number three over here. So once you have this brush, create a new pixel layer again, drag it down below the paint layer. I'm gonna rename it corner paint. So now you can select your color if you don't have it selected again by going to the color tab. I'm gonna keep the same color. Then I, I am going to downsize it a little bit with the bracket keys, something like this where you Put it in each corner. So now again, you can do the same thing and adjust the opacity of the corner paints by going to the layer, corner paint layer, and changing this down 
to like 80. So now I noticed again that this paint is slightly over some of the text. I'm gonna select the paint layer again, go to the eraser with E, basic, just grab an eraser, make it bigger, and just erase some of these. Okay, so now it looks good, control zero, and that looks good to me. If you would like to add something for TV viewers, you can just do a solid color by going back to the designer persona, getting a uh, rectangle tool, and just making some rectangles that go to here. So with the rectangles, you can zoom in if you want to make it perfect, but I don't think there's too many viewers on TV. Although I would be cautious not to overlap it, so leave some room. One quick thing is to export this, go file, export, JPEG, I would recommend maximum settings, 100% quality, export, find the folder, save it somewhere, and enter save it, and then you can just upload this to your channel. So that's it. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to leave a comment if you have any issues with the tutorial or if you need help. And if you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up and subscribe. As always, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.